I still can't quite fathom that there's actually a forgotten theme park on an island at Disney World. It was called Discovery Island and was basically a zoo sitting smack dab in the middle of the Seven Seas Lagoon, within viewing distance of all the surrounding Disney resorts. It has been sitting there for nearly 20 years with little to no human contact whatsoever. It's unreal to think how massive of a company Disney must be to be able to completely forget about an entire park like that. However, rumor has it that there were reasons why Disney decided to never reopen the park to the public again. And those reasons have to do with an alleged man-made substance known as Chemical D. Chemical D is said to be a highly viscous, mint-colored solution that was originally used to eliminate mosquitoes and other bugs from Disney. And considering there's never any bugs at Disney World, one would have to assume they are using some very strong things to accomplish that. According to some of Disney's historical documentation, there was a German scientist named Werner Magdahl who had a lab set up in one of the buildings inside of Discovery Island back in the 1980s. His mission was to eliminate unwanted animals and pests from property, which led him to create Chemical D. It is not known for sure what types of animals he did his experimentation on, because the documents become very sparse related to the creation of this. There are photos and dossiers that have been discovered throughout the years, which prove that he did participate in disturbing studies involving mammals and other large creatures. However, nothing substantial enough to completely prove it. That's the reason a group of my Disney nerd friends planned a recon trip out to the island. We rented two of the little sprites from Disney at the Bayside Marina, my friend Lily, a journalism major in college, and her boyfriend Rich rode in the boat up front, and my longtime best friend Oscar and I used a different one we followed behind with. We didn't have a lot of time because they're honestly pretty damn expensive by the hour. Disney prices, you know. When we arrived, we immediately hid our boats under some overgrown brush we found to evade patrol boats that would most definitely be passing by. Before I stepped out of the boat, I saw Lily staring up into the trees, astonished. Just behind the tree line, there was a family of monkeys swinging about. At that point, I knew we were about to enter a place that had been truly forgotten. We progressed into the island and carefully crossed this dilapidated wooden bridge. Off to the side, there was a transport boat up on land, overgrown to the point where I didn't think we could even get to it so we just pretty much kept going. Continuing forward, we came upon an old rundown wooden building with a porch at the front. A sign at the top was totally faded, but seemed like it used to say Animal Hospital on it. This is it, Lily said as she pulled out one of several documents. We stepped up onto the porch and Rich forced his way through the front door. The smell of mold and rot emanated from the inside. Everything inside the place made it seem like there was some kind of confrontation, causing the people inside to leave very quickly. Papers were strewn about, there was a half-eaten sandwich on the table covered in mold and rot, and there was even a discharged assault rifle shell on the floor. As we each began to search our respective sides of the building, Oscar and I came across an oddly positioned bookshelf. It wasn't flush against the wall and looked as if it had been quickly shoved into place. When we moved the shelf, there was a locked door on the other side of it. Once Rich saw this, he pretty much came over and kicked it in immediately. He was pretty motivated if you couldn't tell. Inside was a dusty little office with strange animal skeletons and dilapidated old taxidermy that were shaped to look like Disney characters. There was seriously a taxidermied rat standing up with giant ears and a dead dog that looked like Pluto. It was horrifying. I stood there unable to process what I was seeing when Lily barged in and began searching through the desk. She pulled out this giant binder containing several folders with photos and documents inside. In the first one, there were pictures of mice, cats, and even black bears caged inside the animal hospital. As she progressed further through the binder, the images became more and more disturbing. There were photos of animals going insane and literally eating their own flesh off their bodies. Then the documents became more disordered. Much of them were handwritten notes done in pencil and not even written in straight lines, most likely written by Dr. Magdal. 
and were repeatedly saying things like, the Disney freaks should fear, and the cult of America will end soon. Then the last page of the notes ended with the sentence, man is the true pest. We all stood in shock at this discovery, but nothing prepared us for the very last folder. It was labeled the Hendersons, and inside it were photos of a family of four walking around Bay Lake. They all looked like tourists. The kids were wearing Mickey ears, and the dad was wearing a fanny pack, totally 80s, but also totally unaware that they were being followed. Suddenly, we heard a bang from beneath the floorboards. We all stood silent and stared at each other in disbelief. Another thud came, and then another. I slowly crept over to the area of the room where the sounds originated from and pulled back a large throw rug. And underneath it, there was a locked cellar door. Another pounding came, and this time much louder, as if someone was trying to get our attention. There might be somebody down there, Lily said, walking over to the cellar. I was hesitant, but Rich, being kind of crazy, immediately responded to what she said by grabbing a fireplace poker from the corner of the room. He wedged it into the side of the cellar door and pried it open, eventually snapping the lock. Hello? We spoke in unison, not getting any response. Rich slowly stepped down the stairs with the poker out in front of him. We then followed behind him into a pitch black concrete hall. As we walked forward, I noticed that there were these plexiglass containment units up ahead. I approached one of them and thought I saw something moving slightly in the background, obscured by a dusty haze. Oscar then got my attention from the other side of the room. He pointed into another one of the containment units, showing that the glass had been shattered. A hand shot out and grabbed Oscar, pulling him back into the darkness. We heard hideous screams from not only him, but some bizarre humanoid creature as well. Rich and I ran into the unit to help, but we were met by a massive nine foot tall man with his skin mostly flayed off. It was difficult to tell, but he appeared to be the same man from the Henderson file that we had looked at in the room above, only much, much bigger. He grabbed Rich's head, slamming it against the wall and knocking him out instantly. He then turned to me and a bizarre thick white fog wafted out from his mouth as he roared in my direction. I ran out of the unit and to my horror, witnessed Lily being literally torn apart by the rest of the mutant Henderson family. Their eyes glowed an emerald green and Lily's eyes shut as she screamed her final breath. I sprinted up the stairs and back into the main area of the hospital on the other side of the bookshelf. Before I ran out the door, I noticed a photo on a table of the transport boat we had seen when we had gotten there, and it was being filled by men in lab coats with these mysterious metal containers. I quickly made my way back to the boat without any further incident and took it straight back to the marina to tell them what happened. For weeks, I was questioned many times by Disney security and local authorities as to what we were doing on the island. But when I just kept going back to asking where my friends were, they pretty much stopped bothering me. Needless to say, I still haven't seen my friends again. And to my knowledge, Disney has never reported anything about this incident to this day. I don't know what drove that scientist to become such a hater of Disney, and really people in general. But I have come to realize that if he was able to accomplish what he initially intended, in all likelihood, there'd be many more abandoned places in Disney World.